Welcome all to this new session of chapter 16, Planar Kinematics of Rigid Body. In this session, we are going to discuss the instantaneous center of zero velocity. So we have only one objective, is to understand the instantaneous center of zero velocity. And we will show you also how we can use it to our advantage, because in many cases, it simplifies the solution of a given problem. Now, the whole story behind the instantaneous center of zero velocity is that for any body undergoing a planar motion, there always exists a point in the plane of the motion at which the velocity is instantaneously zero. So it will feel as if the body instantaneously at one instant were uh, rotating about one point in a rigid body motion. Now, this point is called the instantaneous center of zero velocity, or sometimes, many times, actually, we abbreviate it as IC. And what is really interesting is that this point may not even lie on the body itself. The, if the location of this point can be determined, the velocity analysis can be simplified because the body will appear as if it is rotating about single point. So it's just going to be rotation. No rotation and translation together, just one single rotation, which is velocity equals to omega r. And this is why the instantaneous center is very useful. Let me explain the idea of the center of zero velocity using this very simple example, where we have um, a rod, AB, which is hinged at point A, so the rod can rotate uh, in this way about point A. Now if we write down the relative velocity equation, let's say I want to know the velocity of B using the velocity of A. So this is V B equals to V A plus V B with respect to A, which is indeed equals to V B equals to V A plus omega a B cross R B with respect to A. Now, if you remember, we said that this one has to go from A to B, the position vector. So I'm going to try as much as possible. Maybe it will not be a straight line. So please, I hope you are okay with that. So this is the position vector. And this is basically R B with respect to A. Uh, now, what is the velocity of B? At this instant, it's going to be this. That's the velocity of B. Now, we know that A is fixed. So velocity of A is equals to zero. So this one is zero. This one is zero. And what we ended up with, with omega A B multiplied by R from A to B, which is very simple. So this is why we call A here a permanent center of zero velocity. Now, we may not have this privilege many times. So this instantaneous center appear and disappear and changes with the motion. So let's see how we can deal with that. Here is another example on how to use the instantaneous center of zero velocity. But for this one, we have a wheel which is rolling on the surface without slipping. Now, if there is no slipping, it means that this point, which is point A, this point is very special. It is the point where both the surface and the wheel are intact. They are attached momentarily. Now, the surface has zero velocity. And for that reason, that point A has a zero velocity. Now, that point A belongs both to the surface and the wheel. and we can use this one as an instantaneous center of zero velocity. And for that, we can calculate the velocity at any point on the wheel with respect to point A using only the equation V equals to omega R. So for example, if you look at point B right here, that's point B at the middle, its velocity VB is equal to Omega, which is right there, omega is the same for every point, cross 
R, this R is this one. So all what you need to do is to measure this R. Now, if you consider another point like point C, then the velocity of C is going to be equal to uh, omega R C with respect to I C. So here we are taking the position vector right there from the I C all the way to C, which means that this is going from I C all the way to point C. And the since velocity is always perpendicular to R, then we have it here perpendicular to this. Similarly, the velocity of D is uh, calculated using omega, which is the same omega, multiplied by R, and this R is going from IC to D. So that's IC all the way to D. So how can we find the IC? There are four cases to locate the IC. The first one is if we know omega right here and we know the velocity, which means that at point A, I know what is the velocity. And if I know the velocity as a magnitude and I know that the rotation is going in, in, in this direction, then I can understand that VA is going to have this length as a magnitude and the arrow is going to point toward this direction because this arrow is going to make a clockwise rotation. Now, the only thing remains here is to find the IC, which is which the IC has to be perpendicular to the velocity. So, which direction? Is it in this direction or in that direction? Of course, it is in this direction, and not this one. And the reason why is that the IC is a point as if the body is rotating about. So, that point has to be somewhere in here. The reason is that the, the rotation is going in this direction. So, how can I know this distance? Because it's the only unknown here. This distance is R A with respect to IC, and it can be calculated by dividing VA by omega. In the second method, if we know the directions and the magnitude of two velocities on the body, so let's say point A here has this velocity, which is having a certain magnitude measured by the length of the vector and a direction which, uh, which is known, as well as point B, which has also a known velocity, magnitude, and direction. In that case, all what we have to do is to draw perpendicular lines on with respect to each velocity. So if I draw a perpendicular line like here, and I also have a perpendicular line like here, the intersection, which is this point, is the IC. In the third method, we have two velocities, A and B, on the same rigid body, but these two velocities are different in magnitude and opposite in direction. So if you look here, VA has this magnitude and its direction is here. VB has longer, which is arrow, which means higher magnitude, but its direction is to the left. So all what we need to do to, find, to define IC is to construct a line perpendicular to both because they are parallel. and then draw another line that connect the heads. That's the head of A, that's the head of B, and the intersection right there is going to be the IC. In the last method, we have two velocities again, having two different magnitudes, so this magnitude of VB, and this is the magnitude of VA. But both velocities are parallel, but in this time, they are acting in the same direction. So if that's the case, then again, we construct a line which is perpendicular to both 
you know, there are two parallel velocities. So one line will be perpendicular to both of them. And again, we connect the arrowheads like there. So the arrowheads will intersect with the other line in one point somewhere. And this is the IC. Now, if you look, this IC doesn't even belong to the body. That's the rigid body over here. And it is not on the body itself, which is totally fine. Now, let's have some exercises on how to determine the IC. In this example, we have a um, crank AB, which is rotating on clockwise fashion. And this crank is connected to this connecting rod, which is pushing this piston. So let's see how we can determine the IC. If you look carefully over here, I have drawn you the paths, the trajectory. So the trajectory of point B is a circular path right here. And since point B belongs to this, uh, to this crank, then it is very simple to say that B, the velocity of B, has to be perpendicular to AB. And its sense or direction has to go with the direction of the motion, which is omega in this direction. This is why this velocity is going in this direction. And then we have point C. Now point C is moving in a rectilinear path. So point C will only move along this cylinder. So it's either moving this way or that way. Regardless, if we assume that the velocity is going in this direction, then all what we need to do, we have two different velocities acting in two different directions. So all what we need to do is to draw lines which are perpendicular to each velocity vector. So for the first one, here, this is point, this is the velocity vector at point B, and all what I have to do is to draw a line, as you see this line, which is perpendicular to the velocity vector B. Similarly, I go and draw a perpendicular line to the velocity vector at C. And there you go. That's the IC. The distance or the, the vector going from the IC to B is RB with respect to IC. And the vector going from the IC to point C is called RC with respect to IC. This is another exercise. So point A is going to have a rectilinear motion going either to the right or to the left, while point B will be perpendicular to the radius over here since it is moving in a rotational motion. And now if I draw the two perpendicular lines, then I would have one perpendicular line like this and point a that's a perpendicular line to the velocity vector right here and right here so clearly that's the ic on the other example i have the velocity of c going in this direction and the velocity of b has to be perpendicular to the rod a b now all what i have to do now is to draw the perpendicular line so that's the perpendicular line to one velocity vector and that's the perpendicular line to the other velocity vector and here i got the ic in this exercise we will have the velocity of b acting perpendicular to a b while the velocity of c is just a rectilinear velocity so again all what you have to do is to draw a perpendicular line and that's another one and somewhere here we will get the IC in this exercise we will have the velocity of B again perpendicular to the arm over here and the velocity of C is acting downward so again I have a perpendicular line on this one 
and a perpendicular line to this one and I got the IC probably at point A. For this example, remember the velocity of B has to be perpendicular to this AB right here because this is a rotation about fixed point. And the velocity of C is going in the horizontal. So I draw a perpendicular line to this and a perpendicular line to this and I get the IC right there. That's the IC. And here, that's the IC. In this example, if I draw a velocity vector like here, which is perpendicular to this arm, this one will also be perpendicular to this arm. And now, if I draw two lines which are perpendicular to the velocity vector, these two lines will be parallel. And this means that if I look at omega here, omega CP is equal to VC over RC with respect to IC, which is equal to zero. And the reason why, because RC with respect to IC here is infinity, and RB with respect to IC is also infinity. So if we divide by infinity, we get omega equals to zero. What does omega equal to zero mean? It means that this is only translation. And in rigid body translation, VB will be equals to VC. Now let's solve this example where we have a block D shown right here, uh, moves with a speed of three meter per second. We want to determine the angular velocities of AB and BD at the instant shown. So at this instant, we have this velocity given and the angles are given as such. Now let's just start solving this problem using the concept of the instantaneous center of zero velocity. Now, if you recall, we have the crank AB here and it represents a motion of a rigid body AB uh, rotating about a fixed axis, which is at point A, which means that the velocity of B at least its direction can be determined easily because it has to be perpendicular to the arm. So yet we don't know the magnitude of VB, but its direction is very useful. Now, we have also been given the velocity of a point D and its direction, which is also very useful information. Now, by drawing two perpendicular lines, as shown here, we can determine the location of the IC, which happens to be right here. Now, this is the relative position vector for point B and point D with respect to IC. Now, we can use the angle right here 45 to determine the, the 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 length of those vectors so we have r b with respect to i c which is equal to 0.4 tan 45 and this is going to give you 0.4 meter also so let me just clearly uh, explain this so the tangent of 45 is this vector divided by this one which is 0.4 so you do the multiplication and you get this now you can also take the cosine of this which is going to give you rd with respect to ic equals to 0.4 meter divided by cosine 45 and this is going to give you 0.5657 5, meter now, if we know the velocity at point D, then this whole part appears to be rotating about IC instantaneously. And since IC is located right here, we can basically relate V with omega as a function of the position vector right here. So remember, we said that whenever we have the IC, 
we can find the velocity as omega cross r. Now here, we know the velocity, we know the r. So in order to find omega b d, let me just make it clear, omega b d is equal to v d divided by r d with respect to i c. So this is going to give you 3 divided by 0 0.5657, which is going to be equal to 5.3 radian per second. And the direction, of course, is this direction. Why? Because this one is the velocity right here, and it is rotating this way. That's the velocity by r so it's going in the counterclockwise rotate direction using the same relation we can find vb so vb is equal to omega bd multiplied by r b with respect to ic and here what we have is 5.3 multiplied by 0.4 and this is going to be equal to 2.12 uh, meter per second. So here, uh, what we basically did is that we make we made use of the fact that point B is connected to the IC, and it is part of uh, BD as well as AB. Now, if we want to find omega ab then this is equals to vb divided by rb with respect to a and this is going to be 2.12 meter per second divided by 0.4 meter and this will give you 5.3 radian per second which is similar to the angular acceleration of bd and this one would rotate in this direction. This is another example where we have a cylinder right here, which is rolling without slipping between the two moving plates. That's plate E and plate D. We would like to determine the angular velocity of the cylinder, how much omega, and the velocity of its center right here. Now, what is important here is that this plate is moving in this direction with a velocity of 0.25 meter per second, while this plate is moving toward in this direction with a velocity of 0.4 meter per second. Again, we would like to use the concept of the IC. And here, what we did is we know what is the velocity VA as a magnitude and as a direction so it is acting toward this direction and we know its magnitude also we know the velocity vb and we also know its direction and this is because this plate is moving in this direction and this plate is moving in that direction now if you remember this is the situation where we have two velocities different magnitudes but they are acting in different directions so if we connect the arrowheads that's the arrowheads we will get somewhere the ic so the ic is located right here it is not located at the center of the disc and it is shifted upward because of the difference between the two velocities in magnitude now if we want to know what is the velocity of the center right here then we need to draw a vector going from the IC all the way to the center. This vector is RC with respect to IC. And we know that from the angle right here, that the center will move in this direction. That's a, an, an important information. Any velocity at any point here will move in this direction. And above the IC, any point will have a velocity in proportion moving toward the other direction. 
So if we write down the velocity equation for point B, VB is equal to omega x. So what is x? x is the distance from the surface right here all the way to the IC. And what we are doing over here is we are trying to find how much um, is this x because we don't know the location of the IC. Now, the velocity of A is equal to omega multiplied by 0.25 minus x, which is clearly shown here. So this is the distance 0.25 and velocity of A is away from the IC by this amount. So to calculate this amount, you have to take this length and you subtract this X from it. And this is what we got. So I can write this one like 0.4, which is known velocity, equals to omega X. And from this one, I will get 0.25, which is equal to omega multiplied by 0.25 minus x. So all what I have to do is to divide. And if I divide, what I will get, I will get 0.4 multiplied by 0.25 minus x which is equal to 0.25x. If I solve for x, I will get x equals to 0.1 divided by 0.65, and this is going to give you 0.15 uh, meter. So this length is 0.1538 meter. Now, if I know this dimension, I can go and say omega is equal to VB divided by X, which is equal to 0.4 divided by 0.1538, which is equal to 2.6 radian per second. And it is going in this direction. Now I can find VC, which is equal to omega multiplied by RC with respect to IC. VC is the velocity of the center of the disk. And this is going to be equal to 2.6 multiplied by the distance r c with respect to i c is equal to 0.1538 minus 0.125 and this is equal to 0.075 meter per second and as as we discussed before this is going to this direction here just to clarify how we calculated this amount so this amount is basically half of this because half of this is this distance right here which is 0.25 divided by 2 and x is more than this so x is all of this and all what we want it is to find this distance so to find this distance which is right here you have to have you have to take all of this height and you subtract from it half of 0.25 and this is what we did so to summarize we have basically discussed how to find an instantaneous center of zero velocity and we say that there are four situations one of them is when you know the velocity and omega and the other one is when you have two parallel uh, non-parallel velocities where you have just to draw two perpendicular lines to each velocity and look for the intersection if we have parallel velocities we can either have them acting in opposite direction 
and all what we need to do is to construct one single line perpendicular to both of them and connect the arrowheads and um, if we have them also parallel but they are moving in the same direction then again we have to draw one line perpendicular to both and uh, draw another line connecting the two arrowheads and you look for the intersection and this is where the IC is going to be. That's it. Thank you.